Hi everyone, Kelt here, bringing you the latest on the British royal family, and today the subject is still about Prince Harry. I talked in my last video about how Harry's boasting about his Afghan kills had put a target basically on his back, and the rest of the royals, and possibly anyone going to the coronation in May would be at risk. Harry's bragging about the numbers he had killed during his time in Afghanistan led to the Taliban ordering their people to take Harry out. Now the Defence Secretary, Ben Wallace, is accusing Prince Harry of boasting about something the military don't even talk about publicly. Even amongst themselves, they don't talk about numbers. What makes this worse is that Harry has not killed anyone directly. He was in his bunker all the time, and any numbers he took out were on a computer simulation game. This is what I've been told. He might think he actually did, but I don't think for one minute that the military would have given Harry that level of power, nor responsibility, because they already knew what he was like. His out-of-control behaviour, fuelled by his drink and drugs consumption, was already putting him in the headlines, so sending him off to Afghanistan was not so that he could fight for his country, but to basically keep him out of the headlines, out of the way, out of trouble, and maybe make him grow up a little. I'm told he did little more than play war games on his computer in his bunker and a few photo ops. The very fact that there are said to be young Afghan women who have allegedly had what amounts to be war crimes committed against them by an entitled brattish and aggressive British prince speaks volumes, and so it's understandable that Harry was only tolerated in the army and kept from any real action However, the damage is done and Harry has offended everyone, it seems. The Defence Secretary, Ben Wallace, is accusing Harry of boasting about killing 25 Taliban fighters. He says that it distorts the fact that the army is a team game and that it's not about who does or doesn't shoot the most. He pointed out how Harry had let down other servicemen and women with his comments. Experts have also claimed that Harry has put British service personnel at risk. Far from helping them with his comment, which is what he said his intention was, as he said he thought it would prevent suicides, which incidentally has offended the families who have had to deal with this, he's actually caused a lot more harm. This inflamed and emboldened Taliban leaders who mocked Harry and called for his war crimes to be investigated by an international tribunal. They called him a big mouth loser, so they know about, about his crimes. Harry's war crimes definitely need looking into, and also the fact that he allegedly continued ill treatment of young women in the UK and in the US, and hopefully the women who suffered as a result of his behaviour will speak out. One was about to speak out, but nothing has been heard since. Let's hope the poor woman is able to finally have her say. Former Defence Secretary Lord Hutton describes Harry's comments as a, and I quote, very serious mistake, and he said that it, that it diminishes him. He also said that he was sure that Harry probably regretted saying that, so the military are cringing at what Harry had said, and now the seriousness of the fact that he could well have put a, a target on the British military, the royal family, the British people and the ones who attend the coronation, and yet Harry has the nerve to say that his words were not dangerous. Even the military are seeing the sense of bravado in what Harry was saying and are recoiling from it. In my opinion, the best thing that could happen now would be for the military to give the public the truth about Harry being most of the time in his bunker and to tell us if he actually didn't kill that number of people or even if he had not killed anyone because the only person it will offend would be Harry. And the second thing that should happen should be that his war crimes should be investigated. He can't have it both ways. He can't be a soldier full of bravado and bragging about numbers and then when the enemy challenges him, which they are, he denies having said any such thing and blames the press, which he always does. I can imagine when he was a little child, he blamed the press for everything. And then even more so after his mother died, he blamed the press. And now he's denying having said words 
which we all heard and saw him say. His gaslighting of reporters and interviewers is outright shocking. Although this wasn't as bad as his gaslighting Tom Bradby, I remember him reprimanding a reporter called Rhiannon during his Africa tour. It was gaslighting, deflecting and shaming and showed us who he really is. Let me have your thoughts on this and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.